Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. This is day two of New Rules, Real Estate Agents 2024 Success Guide. Julie Harris, without any further delay, let's jump in right at point number nine. But before she gets to it, remember, this is day two, which means you need to listen to yesterday's podcast to pick up all the notes from the first day. And like always, all of our notes, Julie and I use an outline that we prepare for every single one of our podcasts. It is down below. By down below, I mean open up the show description. Just scroll down and you can, you know, sometimes it says more, or sometimes it just says description or notes or whatever. Click on that and you'll see that Julie and I have loaded all of our notes from today's podcast there. In addition to the notes for today's show, you'll also see a link where you can join Premier Coaching. Uh, We're expecting January and February of 2024 to be some of our biggest months ever as far as agents joining Premier Coaching. We're ready for you. Here's a little suggested, uh, a little suggestion for all of you. Don't wait. Do it now. Get a jump on the year. Get your real estate treasure map done right away. That's really uh, what this uh, podcast from today and yesterday is supposed to all be about. It's supposed to ignite thoughts in your mind uh, and then take those thoughts, take those inspirational ideas and apply them to your real estate treasure map. What we're doing with today's show and yesterday's show is we're trying to give you guys a path forward to kind of calm the nerves so you can enjoy the holidays. No matter what 2023 was, here, I, I got great news for all of you. Ready? Get ready. 2023 is officially yes. the worst year in real estate in over 40 years. They were they were projecting at the start of the year that there was going to be, you know, whoever the they is, right? <laughs> there, there was going to be something like 4.6 million homes. And they go, well, maybe it's 4.3. And then around August, then they say, well, maybe it's going to be about four. But the new number that they're actually yeah. suggesting with a total number of home sales, and this does not include new construction in 2023, is Julie Harris? It's going to be about 3.71, somewhere around there. And that is historically low, as you said, over the past 40 years in terms of number of sales. For perspective on that, the hottest year of the pandemic, which I believe was 2021, there were about 6.3 versus what we just stated, 3.9. I mean, that's a dramatic difference. So if you're feeling like 2023 was a bit of an off year, well, it was. You say 3.6. 3. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. If you feel like, well, here's the good news part. The good news is uh, you just, you made it through it. You lived. You lived to tell about it. You lived to tell about it. And the even better news is that there's every reason to believe that next year is going to be the first year of a long-term cycle of an improving real estate market. No matter what happens with interest rates and all the other, you know, salacious headlines, the simple fact is, is you are in the right place at the right time. But do yourself a favor and get a jump on the new year and get your real estate treasure map done immediately. And we give it to you for free when you join Premier Coaching. And when you join Premier Coaching, you also get, uh, guys, this is incredible, I know, but a daily semi-private coaching call with one of our Harris certified coaches. So do that right away. The link is below, or you can just go to premiercoaching.com. All right. Point number nine, keep your online profiles professional. Don't be political, opinionated, or complain even if it's about commission lawsuits and all of the rest. Don't do that. And also don't have unfinished profiles. Have a professional business Facebook page. Don't get uh, talked into paying for website optimization. Your social media is there to support your business, not to create business. It's not a spoke by itself. We talked about spokes in the wheel and sources of business yesterday. Your social media is to support the actual spokes. For most of you, um, this, what I'm about to suggest is going to be very relevant and, and advice you should heed. Do not get into politics, especially in 2024. It is a presidential election year. You know, as well as I do that the hype and the hate is going to be heightened like never before. So do yourself a favor and unplug from it because even if you are a dyed in the wool, you know, you're on this team or that team, 
if you are overtly flying that team's flag, you're alienate alienating statistically 50% of the people that might otherwise want to do business with you. Now, you might be saying, Tim, in my marketplace, everyone flies this particular flag, and this is where I'm going to do most of my business. That's the reason I said 99%. So if you're in the 1% of the world where everybody's leaning in one particular political direction, then heck yeah, fly that flag, <laughs> you know, because you, be, you need to be essentially in tune with that marketplace. I'm talking to you, San Francisco. But for the most part, most of the country is pretty equally divided amongst the people that are blue or happen to be red. So just keep that in mind. Julie and I's stance has always been re be a Republican. Be purple. Be purple, exactly. <laughs> and don't talk about politics. Don't share your views on things. People will oftentimes, uh, again, just because you're being political, especially in 99% of the country where, you know, 50% of the people are this or that, you're going to alienate people. You're going to do fewer transactions. And you, by the way, it's not really something that you should be pulled into anyway. Focus on being of service to other people and the best version of yourself as a real estate practi uh, practitioner. All right. Point number 10, answer your phone. I know it seems so simple. <laughs> Call people back as soon as possible, even if that's to tell them you're about to be in an appointment, you'll call them at a certain time. But better than that, answer your phone. Answer your phone comes in also in the form of basically responding to texts and any kind of messages. A lot of people now don't make phone calls. A lot of people will communicate with you digitally. So any form of communication from any source needs to be responded to immediately. Putting them in a drip campaign or getting around to it or letting your AI version CRM drip on them and send them all these clever videos and whatnot is not the same as picking up the phone. And Here's the magic of this. When you pick up the phone and you're actually having a professional, organized, uh, albeit scripted conversation, you know, conversation outline, right? You are going to have an immediate advantage in the marketplace that other agents won't because they're not making the effort. People, and this is especially true in the upper end, people will choose not to do business with you if you're not actually calling them. Now, again, I did say, you're going to need to pay attention to all forms of communication, and then you're going to need to get back with them right away. We call it furiously fast lead follow-up, but the answer is to always call them back when possible. Get their phone number and call them. Text them first, because if they don't have you guys, if you're calling somebody back and you're not in their directory, it might just roll you automatically to voicemail. So text them and then call them. That's right. And you know, that, as you said, comes in many flavors. It doesn't matter how they communicated with you. You call them back and, you know, there, there's probably 50 different places in real estate where this happens. One of the ones that drives me crazy is listing agents who don't bother to call their sign calls back or answer their phone when it's a sign call because in their head, they already have enough buyers. Well, what if that buyer has a house to sell? Put the pieces together. Answer the phone. Well, I mean, you know, it's so obvious that this is one of the things, the key differentiators, you know. It is. Because if you, for example, had to hire a roofer to fix your leak on your roof, and let's say you go to your neighbors and you ask for some referrals, and let's say you get to three different referrals, you, you, you get three different referrals, and then let's say you call all three of them and you leave voicemails, aren't you pretty much always going to use the first one that calls you back? Or answers their phone in the first place. Because isn't that psychologically telling you everything you need to know about that particular business owner? That's the key. Don't forget that. Furiously fast lead follow-up and by furiously fast if someone calls you and it goes to your voicemail you're you have to call them back or well, obviously answer the phone but you need to call them back urgently any form of communication needs to be followed up urgently you and those of you who are convincing yourself that you're sending some sort of bad message well you know julie called me back right away she must not have had anything Ugh. better to do with her time that's just you rationalizing being lazy so when you're calling somebody back if you have that psychological issue in your head that you're worried that people are going to think that you had no other customers just say when somebody calls about one of my listings or whatever the answer is i call them back urgently to answer any of their questions just say that to them and if that's a you know seller what do you think you just did you got your 50 you got yourself 50 percent uh, to actually winning the listing when they put that house for sale. You guys get it? Furiously fast lead follow-up is one of the easiest ways for you to have an unfair advantage in your marketplace. Yes, simple but powerful. Number 11, create and use your proven pre-listing package and learn how to present your unique sales propositions. We call those USPs. Your pre-listing package is your silent salesperson. Send it prior to your listing presentation and it will handle all of the usual objections before you even arrive. Zig Ziglar said, success is where opportunity meets preparation. If you are not prepared for a listing presentation by using your proven 
pre-listing package, well, you might not find the success on the other end of that. And by the way, it's not enough to just use your boilerplate one that your company gives you. You've got to be personalized. You've got to be competitive. Well, so what is a pre-listing pack? And to put it in a different way, it's your silent salesperson. We have had at this point, maybe a thousand, but certainly hundreds of new agents who have joined Premier Coaching use the pre-listing pack and won the listing even over the dyed in the wool, you know, embed agents in a particular community because those agents didn't have a pre-listing pack. With the pre-listing pack, our pre-listing pack, not A, but ours does, it answers all the questions that you are living in fear of a seller asking you. Yes, about commission, about reducing your commission, about why should I hire you? Uh, you know, over somebody else, or why is it, you know, a team and advantage or, you know, all these other things. You need to have all these questions answered. What is your marketing plan? What is your internet marketing plan? Are you dealing with, you know, international relocation, blah, blah, blah. All of those questions that people live in fear of, agents live in fear of being asked by a seller are answered in the pre-listing pack. And I have really great news for you. The seller doesn't want you in their house asking you all these, you know, types of questions uh, they would just assume get back to, you know, Wheel of Fortune or whatever, right? Or whatever, yeah. Okay, so they don't want to have you in their house in the first place. Number two is they don't want to actually be putting you in a position where you're uncomfortable. That's not something that people naturally do. So by sending their pre-listing pack, again, it gives you an unfair advantage in the marketplace. So the, you know, point number 10 was furiously fast lead follow-up. Point number 11 is when you find out because you pre-qualified them, you have a listing lead, you're going to send your pre-listing pack. You guys see how this system that is Premier Coaching We'll make it so you have, again, my favorite you know term, unfair advantage in the marketplace. Why not have an unfair advantage in the marketplace? It's time. Yes. And by not using one or using a weak pre-listing package, you end up having to only deal with commission and pricing versus everything that's important. Number 12, focus, this is related, focus on being a listing agent. Listings produce more leads. Buyers generally don't. Sometimes buyers don't even themselves buy. Sellers have to sell, but buyers never actually have to buy. Working with buyers is physical labor. Working with listings is mental labor, which requires skill. Well, the truth is, is now with the change of the commission stuff, the buyers with too. <laughs> buyers is going to be physical and mental because you're going to have to soon be explaining to buyers why they should pay your commission, not the seller. In that an is, upcoming podcast, as a matter of and, fact. Well, we've done many podcasts yep. about this starting about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And by the way, listen back to the 5,000 plus podcasts Julie and I have done over the last you know 14 or 15 years. We have been uh, strongly suggesting that all of you should have your eyes open to the fact that it was obvious to us that the buyer agent commission was going to be uh, removed as an an, an, a, um, what's an the entitlement. Word? A, an entitlement. And, and that was before the commission lawsuits. Too. Yeah, yeah. We, it's because it only made sense, right? To us, it only made sense that it was going to become more like commercial where the buyer agent commission had to be something that was you know asked for by the buyer's agent. Sure. Ultimately, it can be paid for by the seller. The government's not going to be able to make it illegal for a seller to pay a buyer's agent's commission. So you're just going to have to learn the skills necessary to be paid a buyer's agent commission. But the point is, is working with buyers before when it was automatic commission for selling a house, it was a hell of a lot easier than it's going to be in 2024 and forward because of the fact you're all, you're going to be putting in the effort. You're going to have to learn actual sales skills and you're also going to be spending a lot more of your time, which by the way, is going to always lead back to the simple fact that the best way forward for all of you is to focus all your best energies every single day on being a listing agent, which is point number 12 again. Yes. Well, the fact is that most agents only list the easy repeat and referral business that kind of shows up in your lap. And that's okay as a new agent, but to, you've got to learn to win in a competitive listing situation. So you can also list homes with people who do not already know you. You'll be successful at a much higher level and much more quickly when you learn to list people who are not already in your pipeline. All right. Point number 13, always say, yes, it would be my pleasure to help you with that. Then get help if you need it. That's why we have coaching. You can only build your skills by earning while you learn. So don't say no to opportunities when you can say yes. You can always partner with or refer the transaction to another agent if something is just way too far out of your wheelhouse. But you'll be much more versatile and profitable when you say yes more than you say no. Well, that also goes not just in the types of real estate you're selling. Maybe you shouldn't be listing farmland because you don't know anything about it. 
But you should be saying yes to everybody and then referring that because yes. guess what? You can make a referral fee. But what a lot of you do, you don't just overtly say no. You say no because of your lack of action. So for example, if you get an opportunity, I'll run it both ways, to list a really, really expensive house. How many of you are going to talk yourselves out of it? Like say you live at a $500,000 house, but you have an opportunity to list something for $5 million. You're going to be, woohoo, go me. And then you're going to find yourself overanalyzing it, yep. rationalizing, not actually going to the listing appointment. You know, all these kinds of psychological things are going to start, you know, bouncing around in your brain. You're going to talk yourself out of it. On the other end of the spectrum, you get somebody who calls you to list their mobile home in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> in some godforsaken part of nowhere, right? And you're going to then, you know, go through the same mental process, whereas you should have said yes to both and then, you know, yes to the opportunity to earn the right to be the listing agent for both those sellers. And I'll give you guys a personal example. It was our first or second year in the business, and we got a call from somebody uh, I think it was actually, it wasn't a mobile, but it was a house on Roslyn. I remember. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, it was this little tiny house, and I mean tiny, like 500 square feet probably, maybe like 600, that was built in the floodplain out of cinder blocks. And these houses, I don't even honestly know the history of when these were built. They had to have been built probably in the 40s. They were vacation homes for the Columbus Zoo when the Clintonville had the old Columbus Zoo. Oh, seriously? That's yeah. what they were? That's why they that's were on hilarious. the river, and that's why the build quality wasn't so awesome. Their build quality was not existent. Not existent. Okay. For those of you who don't know what cinder block is, think of an upstairs basement. <laughs> exactly. Well, they don't know what a basement is in half the country. All right. So anyway, so we got a call out to list this property. The property had like this gal, I remember this very clearly because it was such a good lesson for us. She had called other agents in the marketplace to come out and list the house. She was she just wanted to put the damn thing for sale. She wasn't even trying to make agents compete. And the other agents didn't even call her back. So Julie and I, of course, <laughs> called her back. We went and took the listing. Now, guess what? She was like the chief administrative assistant for the executive who ran Mettler Toledo, which none of this matters. And she had, from that relationship, she was able to send us over the years, like dozens of deals. Yes, I remember. It was like <laughs> one thing led to the next. And I believe we also brought the buyer for that because nobody wanted to show her house because right. it was so uh, strange. And so you never know. You always say, yes, it would be my pleasure. Your job is to help people to solve their situation to be a problem solver. So say, yes, it would be my pleasure. I'll give you one last example of this because I see this a lot in uh, residential crossing over into commercial. Chris Leon, who lives in Chicago, great agent in Chicago, also part of our EXP family. He did not have a lot of experience listing uh, mixed use commercial property, multifamily, small multifamily, stuff like that. So for his first three to five of those types of transactions, he said, yes, that would be my pleasure to help you. And he partnered with a friend of his who is a commercial agent, learned how to do it, and now has the confidence to not only handle those by himself, but has found a great honey hole called expired commercial mixed use. Yep. I mean, th that's the bottom line is, guys, in a marketplace like this, you say yes to everything. And then after you, you know, essentially seek your te sink your teeth into it a little bit, if you determine it's not for you or if the seller would be better served by another practitioner, you know, if you're an EXP Realty with Julie and I, there are 100,000 agents that you can refer that business to. If, you know, a lot of you are going to get stuck on commercial. You're, you're going to be a residential, primarily residential agent. You're going to get an opportunity to list something commercial. Well, guess what? EXP has got a huge commercial division, so list it with them. You guys get the point? Say yes to everything. Learn as you earn. Exactly. Point number 14. Do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. There will be days when you simply don't feel motivated. There will be days when you overthink yourself into analysis paralysis. There will be days when you feel less than competent. But do the work anyway so that you then can have days of success, gratitude, and profitability. Be able to say, thank you, past fill in your name, for doing the work so I can enjoy the rewards today. I should have said on that previous point, Julie, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily always have to refer it. You can co-list it as well yes. and kind of learn on the job from the other agent that knows what they're doing. You know, work with the master chef if you hope to become one. That's a good idea, Apprentice, too. Apprentice, basically. Right. And But you know what? The doing what you don't want to do, your next point, Julie, 14, doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. We've done lots of podcasts on that. That really is, it, it, go, it flies in the face of so much of the mindset stuff mm -hmm. that agents are being taught, that humanity has been you know, taught over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. that it's a contrarian point. And a lot of what Julie and I coach you guys towards are the contrarian points of life, because that's where the truth is. And for example, you, if I bet you on one uh, 
maybe like three or four words you can write down what you like most about real estate. Then what you'll quickly discover is most of uh, what real estate is, is a lot of drudgery. It's the very definition of a thankless job. How frequently does someone actually say thank, uh, thank you, <laughs> you know, thank you, Bob, for selling my house? Yeah. It doesn't happen that frequently. The more deals you do, the more you realize that the reason that people sometimes are not showing a lot of gratitude is because they're under a lot of stress. So you end up becoming the very, you know, you become essentially, uh, we call it Dr. Phil, you know, mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit of a psychologist, a little bit of a real estate coach yourself, helping your clients. And at the same time, you have got to keep your own business on the rails. In a marketplace like this, especially in an interest rate environment like we have, especially in an election year like we have, especially with all the other especiallys that are out there, you're going to really have to drill down and accept the fact that if you want ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, you're going to have to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And that means there are going to be days where at the end of the day, you didn't have any fun and nothing you did that particular day was in pursuit of any kind of passion, right? Because at the end of the day, that's called work. Now, I'll tell you something that's magical that happens. When you do something for long enough and you start becoming good at it, even if it's something you didn't originally like, you find yourself developing passion for it, which is the exact opposite of what you've been led to believe. Most people will tell you is you find your passion, whatever it is, and then you follow it and then the money will follow. That is a lie. And you know it's a lie. And so the better move is going to be, now, if you, your passion happens to be something that millions and millions of people, or in the case of selling real estate, where your average commission is say 10 or 15 grand, it could be thousands of people are willing to pay for, well, that's great. But for the most part, your passion is not ever going to pay you. But what happens is psychologically over time, when you get really good at something and you start living the benefits of having gotten really good at it and helped a lot of other people, you develop an unbelievable level of passion about that particular activity. So even the drudgery aspects of real estate, you start to, frankly, it doesn't emotionally affect you, but you also start developing passion because you see yourself as, you know, you've become this person that you've always dreamt you would someday be. But that comes with skill. You can't really skip steps to get there. What you're really talking about is the difference in the stages of mastery. Formulation is first, getting ready to get started. That's the treasure map, putting together your plan. Then you go through the most dreaded part of real estate. You just mentioned doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. That's called concentration. Work, work, work. Where are my results? Work, work, work. I'm exhausted. Where are my results? You stick to that long enough, most consistently, and you don't have hiccups, stops, and starts. And then you get to what's called momentum. And that's what you're talking about, where you do find more passion for it. Why? Because it becomes more predictable, more duplicatable. You have confidence. You have skill. You know that every time you have 10 conversations, you're going to take one new listing. You know what you're doing, but you can't well, just skip over concentration to get there. You're talking about basically conscious competence, right? Yes. So the first level of conscious competence, there's four levels to it. Some people say five. And we're getting nerdy on you, but that's what you get when you listen to the podcast. The first level is unconscious incompetence. That's basically when you don't know what you don't know, which is right. frankly, most people getting into real estate mm -hmm. or even unfortunately, a lot of people that have been in real estate, especially following a crazy market like we're, you know, three years out of now, you guys are still not willing to accept the fact that you don't know what you think you know. So that's the hardest part is when you're in the don't know, the, conscious, the unconscious incompetent. You're unconscious to the fact that you're incompetent. Now, here's the magic. Once you've realized it, and unfortunately, the realization often comes after losing a listing or having a crappy year or, or having a center of influence and past client or 10 of them, you know, list with somebody else. Then you creep into the conscious incompetence phase. Oh, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. That's when you join coaching. That's when a lot of you, frankly, start listening to this podcast, you know? You go, huh, there's stuff I've got to learn. And that's exciting because yes. you now realize you know, in the first, when, you, when you're when you losing, the problem is a lot of times when you stay in that unconscious incompetence phase too long and you don't allow yourself to evolve to the next level, you start to question yourself. That's the reason that so many agents fail. Well, that because they give up too soon based on what I just told you, but also because they were essentially following shiny objects without even maybe knowing they're shiny objects. But once you get to the conscious, uh, the conscious incompetence phase, you're receptive to doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level because you know that's the truth. And you also really, you're, you're uh, willing to accept the fact that everything you want in life is going to take, especially in a market like this, 
probably 10 times longer than you think it should. Or maybe what that you know motivational coach from YouTube uh, <laughs> told you it should. Everything in a marketplace like this is harder. The reason that gives you an advantage is because fewer people will be willing to put in the effort over time. That means when you move to the next phase, which is conscious competence, you're now able to do what you weren't able to do before. You have to think about it, though. It still requires effort. When you're actually putting, going on a listing appointment or pre-qualifying someone, you maybe have to lean into the script occasionally or remind yourself what to say. You're not to the point where you can just go on autopilot and most of what comes out of your mouth and your efforts is just you know brilliance. Now, the next phase after that is where our top coaching clients are, which is uh, conscious competence. competence. That's, right. That's where they know they're good, where they can be caught in any situation with any type of situation with any seller or any buyer and whatever comes out of their mouths and whatever actions they take is just perfect because they don't have to think about it. Then, you know, there's, there's ebbs and flows to every one of these phases, but I'll tell you, those of you who are in that top phase, you, you need to make sure you're not allowing yourself to become complacent because then what's going to start happening is things are going to get harder. You're going to start saying, well, shit, I had this whole thing figured out last year or the year before. Why is it harder now? It's because things have changed and you didn't change along with the things and you're being shoved, whether you know it or not, back down to the unconscious incompetence phase. So when you're at the point where everything is smooth and you have momentum to Julie's earlier point, you cannot rest on your laurels. You have to keep yourself challenged. And this is the perfect time of year to do it. And if you know, maybe you can consider following Julie's next point, which is point number 15. Get involved in premier coaching or maybe elite coaching for you so we can move you forward faster, answer your questions daily, and hold you accountable. Scripts, skills, pre-listing package, listing presentation, buyer presentation, and lots of other things will help you to build confidence and for some of you to keep you confident, earn more money immediately, and shorten your learning curve. And I, I like what you said about the agents that are feeling like they're already at conscious competence. They're at the top of their game. They're kind of autopilot. It's been a decent year, especially considering. Well, you guys in some senses are a little bit more at risk because you might be kicking back. You might be taking a break. Well, to your credit, Julie, you said yesterday, and I'm going to tell everyone now, that you want to take on seven to 10 more private clients for elite coaching. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, hats off because you already have quite a few clients but you said specifically the reason that you wanted to do that is because you know for coaching you're operating at conscious competence phase and you don't want to become complacent and you want a bigger variety of clients in different markets. And I totally respect that. I don't want that for myself. <laughs> it depends on the client. But, yeah, it depends on the client. Yeah. But for you, I think that – so for those of you who are interested in having Julie Harris as your private coach – um, as this would be your elite coaching as Julie would literally be on the phone with you every single week. That's a one-on-one -on -one call. It's a one-on-one -on -one call. It's real coaching. This is just training. You can text me. Actually, you can text either one of us directly, but please do text. Actually, I'm just wanting you to text me directly. Um, and I'll text you back and I'll ask you some pre-qualification calls and answer some of your basic questions. And provided that, you know, I think you're a good match for Julie and you are good and you have frankly been pre-qualified then you'll be speaking with her. So the direct phone number to text me is 512-758-0206. So if you really want to go to the next level and you really want to be coached by what many people consider to be the best real estate coach in the nation, Julie Harris, coach, coach, text me directly at 512-758-0206. And Julie, if you want to give a brief profile of the types of clients you take on, well, of course, there's a variety, but it's really especially that top category where, you know, maybe you're doing really great. You didn't just get through this year. You're thriving, but you feel maybe you're stuck. Some of my clients come to me, they're, quote, stuck, nice place to be stuck, 15 million, 30 million in volume. And you feel like the market, you know, the market is shifting. You have no longer got the FOMO, you know, where the market's basically coming to you constantly. Everybody wants to buy and sell all the time. You know that it's going to be a challenging year because rates are not going to go back to 3%. Prices are going to stay high. Inventory, by all measures, is inching up, but it's not getting that much better. A lot of the new clients, that uh, the elites that we're taking on, have also been people that have got teams and brokerages. Yes. And now they're like, they're barely making a profit back in the best of times. Yeah. And now that we are in the worst of times, this is the worst year in real estate in 40 plus years, they're losing money. That's right. We and do some work on the P&O, what's profitable, what's not. Let's do more of what's working and dump what's not working. We look at each team member. Are they a rower or are they a rider? What are the changes that you need to make? And this is a great time of year to get into this because 
One of my goals for all of my private coaching clients is to start the year right and not to start the year getting ready to get started to maybe put something together first quarter. And stop waiting for things that didn't, if it didn't work in 2023, whatever you're spending your money on, maybe you've got a real estate coach now and you didn't improve your business year over year, or maybe you even lost business. It's time for you to hit hard reset and upgrade that experience. You know it. And you know, Julie and I are actually working on another podcast and it was like, what is coaching? What isn't coaching? And one of the things I wrote down um, that we're going to be presenting, I forget which under, under which category, is if all of a sudden your coaching relationship becomes somewhat of a friendship type relationship, we call it buy a friend. And a lot of you are stuck in coaching relationships like that as well, where let's be honest, you can kind of snow your coach. Your coach doesn't hold you accountable. The coach doesn't call you out on your bullshit. The coach lets you get away with too much stuff, doesn't make you actually... There's no accountability. There's no accountability. The accountability aspect and really getting into the question asking and really drilling down on where the skills deficit and skills strengths are, that takes a lot of real work on the coach's part. And a lot of coaches, frankly, have never trained or never learned how to be real coaches. Uh, So they don't know what questions to ask and how to really drill down and get the heart of what essentially you need to move your business forward, especially in a market like this. That's the difference that some of you are ready to, you know, experience. experience. So I strongly encourage you to text me directly at 512-758-0206. I will pre-qualify you. So just so you know, um, and then assuming that, you know, I think you're a good match for Julie, then I'll forward you to Julie and you guys can set up a private call. Or maybe be in Premier Coaching. It's, you know, it just oh, depends. For sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.